Welcome to week four and welcome to another edition of Between the Horn, presented by your Southern California Toyota dealers. The Rams are two and one, heading to Levi's in Santa Clara for Monday night football. That means DeMarco Farr. It is 49ers week. Here we go again. In fact, these two teams are going to meet five times in a 12-month span. Wow. You, JB, you got to help me on this, man. I don't know how to approach this because when I say 49er week to like coaches like Sean McVay, they kind of downplay it, right? It's just another week. But then, you. But then listen to Aaron Donald when he says, I hate these guys. That's the proper mindset. That's my mindset. So, yeah, yeah. 49er week, big week. Uh, it's bigger than most. Let's get it on. I mean, you've always preached it. I've always lived it. Uh, but I do feel like the familiarity between these teams, the roster carryover, and the fact that they've both been competitive now for a stretch, including last year's NFC Championship game, means the locker rooms are finally bought in completely to this rivalry as well. Let's introduce Erica Tamposi to it. Ricky Hollywood, how's your week going so far? Oh, it's going well. I, what are you guys going to do for Sunday? It's a Monday night game. Like, is Sunday just a, a treasured day of watching real other games or are you guys just don't even know what to do with yourselves? DeMarco yep. and I are probably both shaking our heads similarly. <laughs> Laundry, dishes, childcare, Softball. right DeMarco? <laughs> so soccer. Yes, everything <laughs> and a little dash of football. But yeah, it's uh, it's nice to get to watch some games or at least some highlights. Yeah. How do you, yeah. you guys like my home decor this week? No one's commented <laughs> on the change over here at the Long Household. What does that say? I love it. That says Rams. That is a uh, recycled piece of printer paper with nice. the NFC West standings on it. Uh, I look love at you. That. I like that. That's, That's the best I could do. That's but reinforcements are coming. And and it's. Uh, did you get that thematic. off Etsy? Yes, I did, actually. <laughs> Custom ordered. Uh, the turnaround time is amazing. I really do appreciate yeah, wow. it. Wow. Uh, so normally I don't do this because when everyone plays on a Sunday, I don't think it's really worth monitoring what else is going on in other games, right? Because you just kind of find out at the end of the day. But Monday Night Football presents a unique circumstance, I think, because, yes, the Rams are on top of the, the division. And before they play in week four, Seattle is at Detroit. Arizona is at Carolina. Ooh. DeMarco, to assume nothing, but there's a very plausible scenario whereby 515 Pacific time on Monday night, the Rams are going to be taking the field with a chance to go two games up on the rest of the division with head-to-head -head wins potentially over Arizona and San Francisco back-to-back. -back. Wow. Remember a couple of weeks ago we were talking about Sean McVay being under 500 for the first time and how, like, sad that was, and now here we are, uh, like you said, with an opportunity to go two up in the division. Um, I believe in Detroit. I think they're tough. Uh, I'm not sure what Seattle is right now. I think Arizona is struggling. Uh, and maybe it's just against the Rams, but um, – for some reason, uh, just at the end of that game, that was a weird fourth quarter by them. Wouldn't you agree, the Arizona I, Cardinals? I think it's been a weird few years for them, DeMarco. Yeah, it's weird. So, yeah, so if the Rams, and this is most important, the Rams have to take care of business on Monday night. But, yeah, that would be nice knowing Sunday what you have to work for on Monday night against San Francisco. But, Eric, I don't think we've seen the best from the Rams yet. Um, League-wide, scoring is down. Offensive production is down. I don't know if anyone has any theories on that. But the Rams are kind of right there, too. You can see some near misses, uh, more explosive plays last week, but still some disconnect, especially in the passing game. Signs of life in the running game. But uh, I don't think they're fully there yet. This might be the week. Yeah, absolutely. And you said, you know, the whole league may be down, but who leads the league in receptions? It's Cooper Cup and Cooper Cup plays for who are the Rams. So it's exciting. I think I think Cooper Cup and the Debo going back and forth. Jimmy G is has something to prove. You know, everyone mm -hmm. counted him out and now he's back um, with the unfortunate Trey Lance injury. So I I think I think that he might have something a little bit more of a chip on his shoulder than than normal. However, you know, they don't have Trent Williams. Nick Bosa is is on the defensive side. He has four sacks in, in three games. And I'm going all over the place here, just like previewing everything. But I've been really yeah. looking at the team versus, you know, team for team. Because the Rams got the Niners when it mattered most. So I feel like there is that, did they finally break the, the quote unquote curse? Kind of looking at each matchup and unfortunate injuries and stuff that have happened, I, I think that they have a good chance of, of sort of turning this tide during the regular season. Yeah, no doubt. That that uh, Trey Lance injury was unfortunate for him. <laughs> really. Uh, with Garoppolo, look, I mean, JB, you know, all that guy does is what? 
beat the Rams in the regular season. In the regular season. So, yeah. Um, but Nick Bosa, I am right there with you. That guy is like a marauding barbarian chasing red meat. Um, he is absolutely nasty. And that brings up a point I was going to bring up. Uh, the offensive line, look, they've done a great job mixing and matching going in. I think Coleman Shelton was great last week, uh, manning protections with what Arizona was throwing at him. But the one thing you can't do, especially against San Francisco with a guy like Bosa, is give him a first and 15, first and 20, right? Those yeah. turn into second and longs and third and longs, and eventually he's going to get to you. So you've got to clean up those penalties. And I would say this. I would rather you let go and have Cam Akers or Daryl Henderson get tackled for a plus one or a zero than you grab the guy and it goes back 10. You know what I mean? Yep. So play with great technique. Uh, you've done a fantastic job mixing and matching, but you've got to clean up that room a little bit going into Monday night. As you prepare for that pass rush to San Francisco, and by the way, we can talk about this in a moment, but the 49ers might have a case as the best defense in the National Football League. They are as potentially similar to Buffalo, as I think the Rams will get all season long. And we can dig into that in just a second. But DeMarco, back to your point, what I'm encouraged by going to San Francisco is that was as dialed in uh, as I've seen the screen game for a while for the Los Angeles Rams. And, and kind of a pop quiz here. This one surprised me in my study this week. Who do you think behind Cooper Cup is second in scrimmage yards for the Rams this year? It would have taken Higby? me a few guesses. Tyler Higby? Yeah, yeah okay. you're on it. It's a screen you're game. On. I mean, it's a guess, yeah. Right, uh, but the, the way they were finding him and the arm angles with which Stafford was getting it to him, I think you're going to need some of that against uh, our old friend Samson Abukam uh, and certainly Bosa this week. Oh, no doubt. Uh, and, and Samson has really come alive. He has found a spot as a defensive end, putting his hand down and go. So he really looks good opposite Bosa. But uh, going back to that screen game and Matthew Stafford, remember when Sean McVay put it out there about his elbow and it's kind of like a major league pitcher, right? Had a lot of people scratching their head. Well, look at that game versus Arizona. He threw it out of about six different arm slots from about four different platforms. You know what I mean? It was just, mm -hmm. it was over the top, underneath, sidearm, a little submarine shot just to get those screens out. But, you know, that's, that's so valuable. The timing was perfect. I thought Tyler Higby was great on his bluff blocks. Let me get into you, throw you down, turn around, catch. And Matthew Stafford was right on point with those passes. But those are timely, especially against the defense, a hard-charging defense with those two ends, like you just mentioned. They're aggressive. You can catch them upfield, make them pay for it, and then two things are going to happen. Either you pop a long run on the screen or they start choking it down on the pass rush. So either way, good for the Rams. Erica, the Niners are one and two, but don't blame their defense. And don't blame their kicking game really either. You know, Robbie Gold, always good as gold, and Mitch Wisnowski is the uh, NFC Special Teams Player of the Month. Uh, but I'm quoting Yahoo here uh, saying that the 49ers defense has to be beside itself because in one of those losses, it allowed eight completions. That was in Chicago. In the second loss last week at Denver, the Broncos had five points deep into the fourth quarter, and two of those came off the Jimmy G safety. Oh, man. That that Broncos 49ers game was something else, too, which was which was that that's a whole other whole other story. Yeah, the, the defense has has been really, really great. However, the Broncos are a different team. And even with Russell Wilson, they're not producing points at this high level. Like we said earlier, I do think that the Rams haven't even found themselves yet. I think last week was probably the, the closest so far um, of what this, this maybe the first half of the Falcons game of what this Rams offense can do. Um, and, and I think that you know, the, the 49ers might hold them to, to lower points, but we've got a great defense on the other side too. And it's Jimmy G getting a, a safety where Dan Orlovsky is celebrated across, <laughs> across the league. I mean, there, there's a <laughs> lot of, a lot of uh, stuff that can go wrong. He's not and, off the hook yet. No. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's true too. That's true. Jimmy that stepped out so of the back. Funny. Dan was running down the back of the end zone. Come on. You're not done yeah. yet. Yeah. And Garoppolo, um, actually, it worked out for the Niners because otherwise they would have had six coming the other way. They, oh they God, settled yeah. for minus two. Um, right. To, to Erica's point, I thought the Rams missed at least four touchdowns last week. One to Allen yes. Robinson, two to Cooper Cup. We're never going to see that in the same game again. And then the Cam fumble. Um, so there was a lot of good there. Uh, I think there's more reason to be encouraged than discouraged. Uh, but we're still waiting for both of these teams, San Francisco and Los Angeles, to put it all together. Uh, DeMarco, I, I want to go to a, a higher level point that you've been making since the spring, which is uh, there's one player on the Rams defense who has owned San Francisco uniquely. Bobby Wagner, 16-4 and four in his career against the Niners, six sacks, five interceptions, a touchdown. 
you've been beating this drum for months now. This game is why you signed a future Hall of Famer and kind of broke your pattern at off-ball linebacker. Well, you got to give San Francisco a lot of credit with how they run the football. You know, you've heard me say this before. You'd have to be insane to, if you're a guard or an offensive coordinator, to let that guard in front of Aaron Donald show pull. What's going to happen? The the, the second he sees a pull stance, he's going to be three yards in the backfield, right? But San Francisco does a good job of cutting off those edges. So what they do is they force you to go hat on a hat versus the offensive line and use check a fullback. They make you have to play tough ball. So I went back and watched all three games uh, of, of last year and just they would get guys on linebackers. They shall remain nameless. And they would get just enough space so that back has room to operate versus the free hitter. And then off we go. Then you go and flip and watch Bobby Wagner take on guards, take on tackles, take on fullbacks. It's a completely different world. I mean, he's stoning guys. Juszczyk wants nothing to do with him head up, really. He's a position blocker when Bobby Wagner is in front of him. So that's going to help. That's going to help the run game. That's going to help Ernest Jones probably be your leading tackler this week against San Francisco. But completely different game plan, completely different guy, completely different defense versus San Fran with Bobby Wagner. I was thinking about, uh, I know our fan base is frustrated with off coverage sometimes and keeping everything in front of you and the high uh, play count that the Rams defense faced last week in Arizona. But I think that made a lot of sense and they didn't allow a touchdown. So the results speak for themselves. Uh, I would take that personally, DeMarco, any week over week 10 last year at Levi's when the 49ers I thought were downright insulting, running at 44 times in over 39 minutes of possession. Yeah, last week was weird, and it was the exact right game plan. Let's see how many times Kyler Murray can can line up and make the right play. And obviously, 81 plays, 83 plays, couldn't find the end zone. But San Francisco running it down your throat 40-plus times, that's you getting your butt kicked. That's that's disrespectful. That's just they're better than you in the phone booth. So that's got to change. You got to get out on third down and Matthew Stafford and the offense have to stay on the field on third down because it's a team effort to stop that running game from San Francisco. Yeah, I mean, sledgehammer running game, quick throws, high percentage throws, targeting the middle of the field to Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk and George Kittle. This is not a new formula, uh, but Erica, I'm fascinated by the sentiment coming out of San Francisco and Tim Kawakami covers this team really well for the athletic. He described Jimmy Garoppolo this way. With him at quarterback, the 49ers are a rhythm football team, which can be good, bad, and confounding, or both things in the middle of a single game or quarter or drive. This is a guy that some fans revile and the 49ers tried to replace. He said goodbye to the 49er faithful last offseason. Yeah. It's just such a crazy, crazy story. And they kept him. And after all of that, the market didn't fit for him to be traded. So he stayed. And now here he is. Trey Lance is was a, is a rookie uh, for all intents and purposes and was making throws that were a little bit more daring. The 49ers didn't look like this same team. With Jimmy G coming in, he knows this offense. He knows Shanahan. He probably, him and Shanahan probably aren't on the same page right now. Um, you know, there's, I'm sure that there's stuff going on behind the scenes that that we can all infer is, is what's happening. He put the team, you know, in that week two win. That that was because, you know, it was like, look at Jimmy G. He's back. He's back in here. I I I don't know. I I think having Jimmy G is maybe more frightening to the Rams defense than Trey Lance. I think what you're driving at is you have to, you have to assume that with a full week to prepare a long week to prepare when Jimmy Garoppolo pointed to some signs of rust last week in Denver, because of the lack of an off season, because of being the number two coming into 22, that they're going to bring their best back. Don't you think on Monday night that they'll be sharp? Oh yes. Yes. And he knows this Rams team. This is not a Broncos with Russell Wilson that he hasn't played before. And, and of course, you know, Russell was in Seattle, but this is the, what that was different. This is like DeMarco said earlier, he plays the Rams and, and plays them well, essentially has their number except for, you know, the postseason last year where the Rams hopefully turn, turn the tide. And no Von Miller, so that's going to help him. But, uh, you know, look, I think they did make a mistake with their quarterbacks. Um, 
I don't know why they went away from Garoppolo and why they thought they needed to plan for the future, so to speak. You know what I mean? So I thought he was great. And watching him this year, quick release. He puts everything between the hash marks right where you need to have it so his playmakers can make something happen after the catch. It, it really does. Between the hash marks, when you get Debo running on in cuts, you get Kittle running on in cuts, those safeties and linebackers are coming up hitting guys that are looking them square in the eyes. That's hard. And what did Marshawn Lynch say? I'm, I may get got, but I'm going to get mine over four quarters. That's their mentality. So, And I think Garoppolo is perfect for that offense. And I agree with you, JB, with – an extended week, they're going to find some holes. They're going to find out what hurt the Rams in Arizona and bring that stuff back to Monday night. All right, I was like, about- Marshawn has said a lot. Like, I don't like, hmm, <laughs> yeah. which one are we, what are we going to quote here? <laughs> uh, team, we're about 15, 20 minutes into the show, and I think we buried the lead. Uh, many, many people are calling this uh, the showdown of the two best fullbacks on the planet. Uh, yes. So I think we should go there next. <laughs> Kyle's use check for the uh, 49ers made it. He have a nice catch last week in Denver. That was one of their better oh. offensive plays. And Benny Skoranek, um, who I know has has come a long way in the eyes of Rams fans. Um, but look, I, I wouldn't say it's fullback envy, but I do think Sean McVay took a look around the league at some of these defensive structures and his roster composition. And in an effort to come up with creative solutions, found number 18 in Royal and Soul, and it's made a difference. Oh, yeah. I, I have loved people going back and look at all the Benny Sko hate. Remember the Benny Slow comments? Oh, I, I got receipts right here. Right there, right? Yeah. And then it's all flopped. So, I mean, look, the guy was always talented, and he was always willing. He was a, a great special teams player, and to be that type of player, you have to have that mentality. So, And he's fast. The guy that can, He can get down the field. Now, once he learned to stop fighting the football and you know work on his hands, he could be a credible receiver within this offense. But Credit to Sean McVay for coming up with a plan on how to affect defenses out of 11. Now you have a guy like Ben Skoranek that is willing and able to go in there and be a fullback and a receiver at the same time, which means you got to run routes against corners and you also have to root out inside linebackers. Wasn't it Zabin Collins? He ran through on a touchdown run? Took out a first rounder to pave the way, yep. That's embarrassing. For Cam. You should, I mean, look, they should fire the whole defense. A, a receiver leads up on you, gets gets a, a good enough piece of you that the Rams can score behind it. Oh, that's embarrassing. So I absolutely, think, credit to Ben Skoranek. This is an important stop, too, on the Benny Sko revenge tour because I think that drop against the Niners in the NFC Championship game is is one of the reasons why fans wanted more from that position and from Skoranek. But, look, he's he was a seventh-round selection thrust into a very difficult position while he had a full load on special teams. Um, you know, I'm, I've been very pleased. I know you all have too at what the Rams have found in Skoranek. I think his future is bright because of everything uh, he can bring. But the Rams are going to need more threats this week. Uh, again, another complete uh, every blade of grass type of effort because I think the secondary for San Francisco most noticeably has taken a big step forward. Uh, I think these corners and the safeties, even without Jimmy Ward, are as good or better as we saw them at any point last year. So that means Allen Robinson has to show up and have a big game. Um, that means Skoranek has to impact. That means Brandon Powell and the running game and Tyler Higby and whether it's Kendall Blanton or someone else, you're going to need to keep all corners of that defense honest because, as Erica said, we'll see how good they really are. But statistically, having played Chicago, Seattle, and Denver, there's a case to be made. They're the best right now. They're right up there with Buffalo, and they do it without blitzing too. They do it with just their four-man mm. rush, which has been devastating. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. How do you say this kid's name? Hafanga? Yeah. Boy, has yeah. he been good, too. Number I mean, 29. He, yeah. He, he had that big play in Green Bay. Remember the snow game, the block punt? Yes. Ever oh, since yeah. Then, he's ever got since the then, hair. he's been a factor. He looks just he, like and plays like Troy Palomalu. I mean, U- that's... USC kid, too. He's he's a man after the Rams' own heart, right? Because he good yeah. player in college ran a slow 40. Those are usually the, the players that the Rams like to pick up on day three of the draft. San Francisco did it uh, with Talanoa Hufunga. Oh, the, the guy can play. Fred Warner is, is you know, top of the list. Dare I say the best linebacker in the NFC West? Uh, how can I say that with Bobby Wagner? But it, it's one and two, one and one A. I mean, he's, Greenlaw's good. This, this entire defense is good. So that's why it goes back to the offensive line, staying on schedule, being efficient. Uh, don't hurt yourselves. And if you get caught in these, 
third and long situations. I mean, either Nick Bosa is going to get to you or draw a hold. And Samson Ebicom the same way. So uh, you have to be more efficient than you were versus Arizona. Speaking of the offensive line, real quick to Marco, uh, Trent Williams is a huge loss. I mean, he could very well be the top left tackle in the game, but we've seen the 49ers solve for that previously. They've had success against the Rams without both of their tackles before, McGlinchey on the right side as well. I like McGlinchey. I really do. And and uh, not having Williams is huge for the Rams and just devastating for them. Did you see that game you mentioned, Erica, uh, versus Denver? Once the 49ers didn't have the benefit of a run game and they had to throw to get back in it or throw to win it, I think Jimmy Garoppolo was hit, harassed, sacked, and he threw a pick. So when it becomes a passing game, if you can take away the run game, uh, force it back into Jimmy Garoppolo to, to have to beat you with his arm, I think you can get to these guys, especially now that their big left tackle is out of the game. Yeah, and on the interior, they look different, right? With Mac retiring... I mean, their tackles have been good, but you're talking about a second-year left guard, uh, yeah. and potentially an undrafted center, a rookie right guard. We all know who's going to be lining up and thoroughly vetting them for four quarters on Monday. Well, AD's going to probe. You know this. But, I mean, Greg Gaines has to continue to grow. Uh, Ashawn Robinson continue to be that guy. And like you said, right behind them is Bobby Wagner. So you know what the Niners are going to try to do and what their mentality is. Uh, so you're going to have to step up, meet them on the phone booth, and see if you can change their mind. Yeah, I'm glad you, you went there because I think the other thing that's changed in this rivalry is the Rams became a much more stout running defense deep in last season and into the playoffs. And they've started the month of September this season as one of the best rushing defenses in the National Football League. All right, one more lap around the horn here. Final thoughts as we wrap up this week four edition of Between the Horns. Ricky Hollywood, want to take it from here? Well, I just want, remember we were at that um, the kickoff for charity event, JB, and yes. there everyone was sitting at a table with the different players, and JB and I kind of got the um, oh y'all you're here you know we'll put you at this table, and so it was just us essentially, and then Ben Skoranek sat down and we're like uh, hey sorry like it's it's you're just stuck us. with us <laughs> yeah um and so we really got to talk with him and he is super funny and i loved listening to his press conference when he was like when mcveigh asked me to go to the his office i was like oh no like what did i do when he told him he was gonna be you know be playing fullback he's got a fun personality he's blocking dudes crazy i just like am, am rooting for him so much harder than i think i i ever would and i i just like treasure these sort of special moments where you get to learn more about these players like off the field as well. I hadn't put two and two together there. That's a good call. Table 26 was yes. the uh, wow. was the spark for a breakout season <laughs> for Ben Skoranek. I all, think so too. And I think to Tamposi, yeah. right? I, no, I think JB, it was you that you were like, have you ever considered fullback? And he'd be like, oh, I'd be great <laughs> wow. at that. But wow. I just didn't. <laughs> yeah. You're just like, how about this cantaloupe? No, I asked him, I was like, do you eat this fried chicken? And he goes, no, I won't eat that. And I was like, yeah, that's that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> Could not have asked for a better closing thought from you. Unreal. Well done. <laughs> DeFar, uh, 49er week preview for us. Yeah, Benny Sko would be like he's, to me, he always should come out of a game with blood on him, either his or somebody else's. That's just the way he plays. Um, yeah, he's rough. How about the secondary, uh, the Rams secondary? Can we call them the five heartbeats as in they do what five does? Um, and I'm glad to see that Jalen Ramsey is back to his physical self. You know what I mean? I mean, he he dropped John Connor for a a minus one on a third and one. Using That's that great. right shoulder. Absolutely. So yeah. he's back. Yeah, that was great. Darian Kendrick. I love his energy. I love his excitement. Uh, you can't be trying to throw guys over the bench, you know, on their sideline. But you know San Francisco is going to circle that and Debo is going to going to look you up. So that's going to be something special. Um, searching for 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 Allen Robinson. Got to have it. Uh, you guys mentioned Cooper Cup. Uh, he's tremendous. Uh, there's nothing you can do to stop him. The Cooper Cup hate must stop. Uh, but he needs a partner. And and Allen Robinson, I, I think, missed some opportunities. You mentioned that earlier. So uh, if you get that two-headed monster going in the passing game, um, I think Cooper Cup can be that much better and it will help the offense. So the 49ers, it is 49er week. This is about it's like 405 traffic um, to get to where you want to go. You know, you got to get through that. You know what I mean? You got to get through them. Um, so if you have designs on, what do you say? Uh, is it defending or raining? Raining. Rainy champs. Yeah. Keeping your crown. Um, you know, it all begins and ends with these guys, and it starts on Monday. So can't be more excited. 
Yeah, with the uh, long week, we haven't seen so much as an injury report yet for either the 49ers or the Rams, but I think there's reason for optimism that hopefully LA will go into this game with the uh, the better of that by the time we get to Monday. And yes, DeMarco, to your point, these two rivals do play again in week eight, October 30th. That'll be at SoFi Stadium. That will be the fifth meeting between them within a 12-month span. So there will be blood, there will be bad blood Monday <laughs> night and again before October is out. Ricky, have a good rest of your week. DeMarco, I'll see you a little bit here for Rams All Access and uh, up in San Francisco as well. Thank you, as always, for joining us for this edition of Between the Horns, presented by your Southern California Toyota dealers.